let's take a look at information quality and decision analysis. Central to all of the decision-making elements is the quality and quantity. The ideal situation, the rational model setting, would be one in which an official had total access to accurate data directly related to the alternatives under consideration. In practice, decision makers most often settle for a less than complete set of information, usually because a decision is needed promptly. Even officials or agencies who have strong political support prefer hard data to back their decisions. A recurring pattern of faulty or inadequate data could endanger that support. Decision analysis is the use of formal mathematical and statistical tools and techniques like sophisticated computer simulations to improve decision making. The rapidly growing need for information has been met with growing technologies and resulted in vastly expanded decision making capabilities. Technology may also have created an illusion of greater capabilities than we actually have. Malfunctions in both humans and computers can and do occur in the myriad of technological systems that support decision making. When these malfunctions happen, data necessary for an informed decision can be inaccurate and, as a consequence, the decision reached will be inappropriate because the problem was incorrectly defined. Experience, training, perception, and continued learning can contribute to one's judgmental capacity. It's the integration of individual competencies and computer technology that leads to the most effective decision. Computer hacking and viruses that may affect all data contained in a personal computer file is one risk we need to pay attention to. Information costs, like the personnel and time that must be devoted to its acquisition, organization, and presentation can become prohibitive. We tend to attach high importance to objective information, Yet even the most fair-minded individuals have subjective values that color their perceptions. Information is a source of power, and it's often in its best interests of an agency or official to provide only information that will have a positive political effect. Decision makers also face other kinds of problems. For one thing, decision making is strongly influenced by previous decisions and by policies already in effect. Instead of starting with a clean slate, decision makers must work within the confines allowed by past choices. Another problem is unanticipated consequences in spite of efforts to foresee all of the outcomes of each decision. Yet another potential pitfall in decision making process is the phenomenon of groupthink. Groupthink is defined by a social psychologist as a mode of thinking that people engage in when they're deeply involved in a cohesive in-group when members' strivings for unanimity override their motivation to reasonably appraise alternative courses of action. Decision-making involves sunk costs, certain irrevocable costs resulting from a commitment of past resources. The realities of sunk costs rise the stakes of decision-making. Sunk costs suggest that once a decision has been made to proceed in a particular policy direction, certain costs would be incurred if that direction were to be reversed later. Given the variable nature of goals and of the elements in the decision environment, such as resource availability, information constraints, and sunk costs, the right conditions for the rational decision model are found rarely, if at all. However, Though rationality as a process is unlikely to be found in administrative decision making, reasonable, sensible, and productive decisions are not only possible, they occur frequently. We must try to reduce the effects of uncertainty so decisions are useful in solving the problems at hand in an anticipating longer-term needs.